Howdy folks. I've always wanted to test a real world comparison of the shotgun picket pattern versus the cardioid picket pattern. So today that's what we're gonna do. For this video, I would definitely recommend listening on a good pair of studio monitors or a good pair of headphones. For the microphones, I'll be using the Sennheiser MKH-416 for the shotgun pickup pattern. And then I'll be using the Octava MC-12 for the cardioid pickup pattern. And those will be both run into an H6. I'm not gonna go into great depth on the difference between shotgun pickup pattern versus a cardioid pickup pattern. There's lots of videos out there that do that. Simply put, this is the areas where a shotgun mic picks up the best. Here's kind of the areas where it rejects. Here's the areas where a cardioid picks up the best, and then it also rejects these areas. All right, so here is how the shotgun mic sounds straight on. Here's how it sounds to the side. Here's how it sounds from the rear. And then here's back how it sounds straight on. Here's how the cardioid pickup pattern sounds straight on. Here's how it sounds from the side. Here's how it sounds from the rear. Here's how it sounds back straight on. Now let's go do some testing in real world spaces. First, we have a large space, then we have a medium space, and then a small space. All right, so we're in the living room, carpet on the floors, about eight, nine foot ceilings. Um, there's a furnace running, refrigerator, didn't turn that off. So hopefully kind of a real world test here. <laughs> Worst case scenario, real world test uh, to hear how the mics are picking up in here. So I'm gonna read a quote. We'll see just how straight dialogue sounds. By manipulating what you hear and how you hear it, and what other things you don't hear, you can not only help tell the story, you can help the audience get into the mind of the character. Walter Merch. So kind of another real world test is if the interviewees leans forward because they're talking and getting into what they're saying, they're pausing and thinking and looking up, looking away maybe, distracted by something that's over here or over there. If the interviewees leans forward because they're talking and getting into what they're saying, they're pausing and thinking and looking up, looking away maybe, distracted by something that's over here or over there, and just testing how these are picking up. I'm also gonna switch over and test if you had to have two interviewees, but one mic. So if I move over. So for a two interviewee setup, you only have one mic. I've run into this in situations. So you have the other interviewee over here, mics splitting the difference, trying to best pick up both of them. but if the interview is talking to the host here and then they're turning back and talking here, looking back over, their heads being moved back and forth. How does that sound um, with the pickup patterns? Now we have the mics about two feet away, testing how it sounds. Again, you gotta shoot wide. You're not shooting a clean plate to be able to paint out the microphones. Uh, so your microphones are way, way up and your sound person is very sad and will need lots of coffee. So this is testing how it sounds from here. If I move over, again, a little bit of like, Two interview setup, you have one person over here, one person over here, split the difference with Mike, and you're talking back and forth. Talk to the interview some, you know, you're laughing, ha ha, great time, and then you're turning back to the camera, seeing how that sounds here, and you're talking back and forth. Talk to the interview some, you know, you're laughing, ha ha, great time, and then you're turning back to the camera, seeing how that sounds here, and we'll see how that one sounds. Yeah, I'm saying sounds so much, but it is sound. All right, now I'm in a bedroom space. The mics are about, 10, 12 inches away. Uh, this room does have some strange acoustics, the ceiling's uneven and stuff. So it would be a good test to kind of see how the rejection is from the rear of the microphones and also how much they pick up of the room as well. So if the interviewee is looking up, maybe thinking some, leaning forward if they're talking, leaning back if they're talking. So if the interviewee is looking up, maybe thinking some, leaning forward if they're talking, leaning back if they're talking, um, just kind of looking around while they're talking. Hopefully there's not that much distracting in your space, <laughs> but you never know. So there is the test for about a foot away. Now I'll move over as if we have two interviewees. So talking here, looking off to the side a little bit, moving around so that the, uh, getting a little off access of the mics. Hopefully your interviewee isn't looking back behind them while they're talking, but you never know. So talking here, looking off to the side a little bit, moving around so that the, uh, getting a little off access of the mics. Hopefully your interviewee isn't looking back behind them while they're talking, but you never know. 
Now I'm in a bathroom to test them out in a small space to see how it sounds. If I kind of lean forward and we're talking, lean back, look away some, talk back to the microphone. If I kind of lean forward and we're talking, lean back, look away some, talk back to the microphone. You can hear the difference for that. Now the mics are about two feet away. So <laughs> for some reason, a small space, you had to be two feet away from the uh, character interviewee. So you kind of test the leaning forward, test the looking up and over if they're thinking while they're talking. So you kind of test the leaning forward, test the looking up and over if they're thinking while they're talking and you can kind of hear how it sounds in a small space. That concludes our real world testing. Let me know in the comments what you think, which mic you think did better in which scenario. And I'll be curious to hear y'all's thoughts there. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.